It was in the early 1800s, around about the time our institution was formed, that the Irish Commissioners of Public Works became very concerned about the remoteness of the glens of Antrim. They wrote, it is cut off from any reasonable means of communication by the badness of the roads and the steepness of the gradients. So they decided to build a new road to open up the glens for trade and to help the people and to ensure the movement of the forces of law and order. They commissioned a civil engineer, William Bald, from Burnt Island and Fife, to design the road. Now, it had been thought that the road would run some distance inland, but William realised that that just wouldn't work because the road would be too steep as it came down the sides of the valleys or glens and then up the other side. So William's big idea was to build the road on the foreshore and to blast the cliffs, some of them more than 100 metres high, to form the foundation of the road. He wrote in his report, which is in the library of our institution, over 30,000 cubic yards of rock have been hurled down on the shore, mostly by blasting, and that has been executed by skill and judgment. It was quite a sustainable way of building the road because he brought nothing in and he brought nothing out. And in the days of the horse and cart, that was very important. The cliff face was blasted down and formed the foundation of the road. But it was dangerous work. And William wrote in his report that he used Beckford's patent safety fuse, which he said had reduced to a large extent the injuries to which the miners were particularly liable. William started the road in 1832 and it took 10 years to build. The commissioner's budget was £25,000 but unfortunately it ended up costing £37,000 so the commissioners weren't terribly pleased but they got a fantastic uh, new asset which really did open up the glens and just changed the life of, for the people forever. You see, travel was so difficult for the people of the glens before the road that they found it easier to trade their goods across the channel uh, to Scotland than to the nearest towns in, in Ireland. William was not one of the famous Victorian civil engineers. In fact, there's no portrait of him and the only memorials we have are a plaque here on the Antrim Coast Road and also one in his birthplace, Burnt Island, erected by ICE Scotland. When I became president of the institution in 2007, I talked about the unsung civil engineers who work quietly away doing great things for the public good but often aren't recognised and I used William as an example of one of those unsung heroes. But perhaps William's best legacy is the Antrim Coast Road itself. It has been a fabulous asset for the local people and it has become one of the most famous tourist routes in the world. I'm very proud of William Bald and I'm proud that the Antrim Coast Road is one of the ICE 200. For young people who are thinking of becoming a civil engineer or perhaps just qualified as a civil engineer, this is a great example of the difference that you can make to the lives of the people. You can do real public good uh, through our work in building roads, water networks, buildings, power systems, all of the things on which our civilization depends. That's the exciting thing about being a civil engineer and I'm sure that William when he was building this road in 1832 was really excited to make a start on such a fabulous project. <laughs>